JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week of August the 31st until September the 4th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, last week was a relatively light one in terms of uh, scheduled events and releases, with the main one being the Jackson Hole Annual Economic Symposium. This week we have one central bank deciding on interest rates, and this is the RBA. As for the data, the highlights may be Eurozone's inflation numbers for August, as well as uh, the US and Canadian employment reports for the month. Now, on Monday, it is uh, a bank holiday for the UK, and thus uh, markets will be closed there. Elsewhere, we already got Japan's industrial production and retail sales for July, as well as China's official PMIs uh, for August. Japan's industrial production accelerated to 8% month over month from 1.9%, but retail sales slid 2.8% year over year after rising 3.9% in June. China's manufacturing PMI ticked down to 51 from 51.1, while the non-manufacturing index rose to 55.2 from 54.2. This drove the composite index up to 54.5 from 54.1. As for the rest of the day, the calendar appears rel relatively light, with the only release worth mentioning being Germany's preliminary CPIs for August. Both the CPI and the HICP rates are expected to have increased to 0.1% year over year from minus 0.1 and 0% respectively. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asian morning, the RBA decides on monetary policy. At its uh, August meeting, the bank kept its uh, targets for the cash rate and the yield uh, on uh, three year government bonds unchanged at 0.25% noting that its mid-March package for, of support is working as expected. What's more, officials noted that even though the worst of this contraction has now, has now passed, the outlook remains highly uncertain and that the recovery will be dependent on the containment of the coronavirus. Since then, the only top-tier data we got was the employment report for July. The, employment, the unemployment rate ticked up to 7.5 uh, from 7.4% instead of rising to 7.8% as the forecast suggested, while the employment change showed that the economy gained 114.7 thousand jobs, beating estimates of, all, of only 40,000. 40, With that in mind, and the bank noting that it in its uh, baseline scenario, the unemployment rate is likely to rise to around 10% uh, later this year. We don't expect the 7.5% rate to prompt RBA officials to act at this gathering. We expect them to stand pat and reiterate that the outlook remains highly uncertain. As for the Aussie, we stick to our guns that it is likely to stay mostly linked to development surrounding the broader market sentiment. If the risk on trading continues, its uptrend is likely to continue as well, especially against uh, safe haven currencies like the dollar and the yen. During the European day, Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for August are due to be released. The headline rate is forecast uh, to have declined to 0.2% year over year from 0.4%, while no forecast is available for the core rate, which stood at 1.2% in July. The bloc's unemployment rate for July is also coming out, and the forecast points to an increase uh, to 8% from 7.8%. At its uh, last meeting, the ECB did not, after its uh, monetary policy, but stayed ready to adjust all its, all its uh, instruments as appropriate to 
to ensure that inflation moves towards its aim in a sustained manner. With that in mind, further slowdown in consumer prices may increase the chances for additional easing by the SMB and perhaps hurt somewhat the euro. However, we don't expect this uh, data set to prove uh, the catalyst behind a trend reversal in euro dollar, with the greenback staying under selling pressure due to, due to the recent uh, risk on trading, we would treat any pullback in, uh, in the pair as a corrective phase of the broader medium term uptrend. As for the rest of Tuesday's data, during the Asian morning, Japan's unemployment rate for July, Australia's current account balance uh, for the second quarter, and China's Kaijin manufacturing PMI for August are, are coming out. Japan's unemployment rate is expected to have inched up to 3% from 2.8%, while Australia's current account surplus is forecast to have increased to 13 billion Aussies from 8.4 billion. China's Kaijin index is expected to have slid to 52.6 from 52.8. <coughs> Excuse me. During the European day, apart from Eurozone CPIs, we also get the final manufacturing PMIs for August from several Eurozone nations and the bloc as a whole. As it, is always the, as it is always the case, the final prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. The UK final manufacturing PMI is also coming out. Later in the day, we get the US final market manufacturing index alongside the ISM manufacturing PMI for the month. The final market print is expected to match its initial estimate, while the ISM index is expected to have risen fractionally to 54.5 from 54.2. Now on Wednesday, during the Asian trading session, we have Australia's GDP for the second quarter. The forecast, uh, su the forecast uh, suggests that the Australian economy contracted 6% quarter over quarter after sliding 0.3% in the first quarter. This is likely to drive the year-over-year -year rate down to minus 5.3% from plus 1.4%. A minus 5.3% year-over-year GDP rate would still be above the RBA's own forecast uh, for the quarter, which is at minus 6% year-over-year. And thus, we don't expect this release to alter expectations around the RBA's future plans. We believe that a much worse than expected print is needed to spark speculation for additional easing by this bank. Later in the day, during the US session, the ADP employment report for August is scheduled to be released. The report is expected to show that the private sector has gained 900,000 jobs in August, more than the 167,000 gain during the month of July. This may raise speculation that the NFP print due out on Friday may fall short of its own forecast, which is at 1.4 million. Nevertheless, as we noted several times in the past, the ADP is far from a reliable predictor of the NFPs. Even last month, when the ADP number was at 167,000, the NFPs came in at 1.763 million. Now, on uh, Thursday, Asian time, China's Kaijin Services uh, PMI for August is released, but no forecast is, is currently available. During the EU session, we have Switzerland CPIs as well as Eurozones and the UK's final services and composite PMIs all for August. Switzerland CPI is expected to have ticked up to minus 0.8% year over year from minus 0.9%, while, as it is always the case, the final PMIs are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. We get the final market services and composite PMIs for August from the US as well. They are also expected to confirm their initial prints. ASM uh, non-manufacturing uh, PMI for the month for the month and the nation's trade balance for July are also due to be released. We get trade data for July from Canada as well. Finally, on Friday, the main release is likely to be the US employment report for August. Non-fund payrolls are forecast to have increased by 1.4 million after rising by 1.763 million in July while the unemployment rate is anticipated to have declined to 9.8% from 10.2%. Average hourly earnings are expected to have slowed to 4.5% year-over-year from 4.8%. Last week, speaking at the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium, Fed Chair Powell said that the Fed will now target a 2% average inflation 
and put emphasis on, uh, on broad and inclusive employment with the shift motivated by underlying changes to the economy, including lower potential growth, persistently lower interest rates and low inflation. Although he added that the committee is uh, not tying itself to any particular method to define average inflation, this means that the Fed is willing to tolerate above 2% inflation for a, for a while before raising interest rates, which implies extra loose uh, monetary policy for longer. What's more, in the minutes of the latest FOMC gathering, it was revealed that additional accommodation may be required. However, our own view is that a decent employment report may lessen the chances for, um, for additional stimulus as early as uh, at this month's, uh, at this month's uh, uh, meeting. Officials may wait for more evidence before deciding whether or not to expand their efforts uh, to stimulate the U.S. economy. We get employment data for August from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is expected to have uh, declined to 10.2% from 10.9%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added 300,000 jobs after gaining 418.5,000 in July. At its uh, last meeting, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates unchanged at 0.25% and noted that they will stay there until the 2% inflation target is su sustainably achieved. Officials also, know, also added that they will continue with their QE program until the economic recovery is well underway and that they stand ready to adjust, uh, to adjust their programs if uh, market conditions change. With that in mind, and also taking into account that Friday's GDP data showed that the Canadian economy performed better than expected in uh, June, despite sliding 38.7% on a quarter-over-quarter -quarter annualized basis, we believe that uh, a relatively good employment report may allow Bank of Canada policymakers to stand pat for a while more. As we noted last week, with oil prices still in an uptrend mode and the broader market sentiment remaining relatively supported, the Luni may stay relatively strong for more, especially against uh, the safe havens like the US dollar and the Japanese yen. Now, as for the rest of Friday's releases, those worth mentioning are Australia's uh, retail sales for July and the UK construction PMI for August. Australia's uh, retail sales are anticipated to have accelerated to 3.3% month over month from 2.7%, while the UK construction PMI is forecast to have risen uh, marginally to 58.3 from 58.1. Uh, so that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those, uh, uh, I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next uh, Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and, frequ and frequent analysis, you can find me on our uh, YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.